Welcome back from that break. It's all good. That was the game between the Black Stars, Black States, yeah, Black States of Ghana. That's how they call them, Black States of Ghana and the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We did fantastic. There have been a lot of analysis in that particular game. I don't analyze. I say it the way I say it. We didn't do too well. We had the opportunity to kill the game. We let it slip by. I hope it's not going to hurt us. We will come back to Abuja for the second leg on Tuesday. But that as it may, Prince Ogaga is still writing here in the studio with us. We'll be going, haven't talked about the Super Eagles, but Dua Wakego, the in-house man, is writing here joining me. Dua, good afternoon. Good afternoon, the Duke. Uh, did you guys plan it? Um, <laughs> oh, uh, we, are, we are brothers from okay. the same state. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Duel is in here. Uh, let me quickly uh, take on Prince. You saw the game. Uh, there were a lot of qualifiers. There were two key games. A lot of people were particularly looking forward to the game between Egypt Antony. and I mean, uh, Senegal. Senegal yeah. And the game between the Black Stairs. I prefer Black calling that one Stairs. Yeah, Black the Stairs. Black Stairs of Ghana and the Super Eagles. Now, before you say anything, uh, we had a show yesterday, which is our normal weekly show, Sport Matters. Okay. And I told him the Eagles won't win. They've seen as a cynic. They think I'm crazy. <laughs> but the truth remains, Prince, is that the team we have, we have the material, but they're not being harnessed. That is where my own problem is personally. And the game between Egypt and Senegal, I told him that, permit me to use this word, spiritually. Mm -hmm. It was agreed. Senegal, you take the Nations Cup, Egypt will go to the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. He laughed because he was laughing. And yeah. that's the scenario we're seeing. But let, me, let me quickly ask you your take on those two games. Yeah, but seriously, I think I'll um, agree with you. I'll, I'll agree with your take. Because um, for Senegal and Egypt, you know, I was telling somebody the same thing. I said... There's a way this thing is going to go. Senegal mm -hmm. has taken the African Nations Cup, right? But they're not going to walk up. Well, somebody look at me and say, ah, that team is superb. You can't <laughs> just say they can't go to the World Cup. I say, yeah. yeah, but that's how it's going to be. Because mm -hmm. trust me, the Egyptians will die. They will die. They will die on that pitch. Mm -hmm. When it comes home and away, the Tunisians will be ex the um, Egyptians will be exceptional. You understand? Because they know what is at stake. Very true. Will, psychological warfare. Psychological warfare. They want to make sure that this one does not slip by. But for the Super Eagles, I was not surprised because... Oh, you were not surprised? No, I was not. So I have an alibi. Oh, my God. I'm happy. <laughs> I have an no, alibi. Seriously, I was not. I was not surprised because, you know, the preparation towards the game shabby. was so shabby. There was no... The energy was not there. You know, the energy was not even up to 60%. Mm. You understand? The drive, the... the, 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 the the whole thing was just a little bit above 50. Mm. You understand the preparation. And getting to Ghana, you understand? If you check, if you're looking from the Ghana's perspective, you see the preparation. You will see that they pump up the energy down to every citizen in Ghana. You know what? You know what? I can't switch you over to my seat. I will have lost <laughs> coming there because you're speaking my mind. Yes. Yes. Because that's the truth. Everybody in Ghana, they have beaten Nigeria in their head. Honestly so it's a psychological speaking, thing. Yes, it is. Already. So like I was hearing a friend saying uh, the, the preparation for uh, the Ghana did not really give uh, the Super Eagles a, a good, um, proper, welcoming package and stuff. I said, that is the whole game. It was designed. It was yeah. designed to yeah. be like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? To, to make sure you're Stabilizing yes, psychologically. Stabilizing psychologically. And they started doing that even before the Super Eagles started assembling in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They started doing that. Mind on game. media and every year, mind game. They didn't. They didn't put their first eleven on, on in public space. Wow. Yep. On the media, you, you you see how the whole thing started. Yeah. But they were ready. In in Ghana, there everybody on the street is talking about Nigeria, how they are going to beat Nigeria. All right, Joel, let me come to you. Uh, we know we've, we've spoken about this Ghanaian game. Let me get your assessment because our Prince got to go. We have almost an hour to talk about what we know how to talk about. Yeah. But let me quickly get your assessment of that game we're coming back to that segment but let me get your assessment of that game um if if i have to go by statistics the game now we're they were there and we're here you know they had all the home advantage the chanting everything yeah and funny enough i'm I, i'm going to give it to the Ghanaians, and i'll tell you why a lot of those guys are debutants they've not played together in their life and you saw the game yesterday they played as if they've been training all the, for, for me all the while so yeah. I give it to them. They were they had a very short period to you know practice the formation, and they actually did. Nigeria was talking about country down the wings. We never did that. We just relied on this individual ability to you know wake them. So individual to speak. football. Let me ask you this: um, There was a write-up by the Ghanaian uh, FA boss Orakuku. He said uh, the Super Eagles are babies 
pretending to be big boys. Mm -hmm. What do you think the second leg game will look like in Abuja on Tuesday? Because that is a do or die for both nations. Well, <laughs> for me, I'll give it to Nigeria because we we kind of they've awoken us. You understand? Because we thought we were just going to Ghana and just give, override them. Yes, and just give them like one O and mm -hmm. relax. But it's now different. We now see that it's a different ball game. And you know the Super Eagles, when it comes to things like this, they try to give you results when they are in serious corner, do rest, you understand? So they know if they lose this match, the entire nation will be on their neck. <laughs> no, seriously, especially the coach, you understand? And for me, my take on the coach is that after this qualifier, we should look for a very good coach. Uh, uh, do you think Amunike has an impute in this particular game, um, technically? Well, technically, I would say no, because seriously, if you watch what happened yesterday, <laughs> you will see that we lack technical expertise. Mm. There was no technical touch. You understand? Down from, from the formation, first 11, down to the um, reserve bench, mm. everything was shabby. So for me, as after this, um, this whole um, qualifying series, we, we should, should look, back yeah, and... if we qualify. Yeah. The World Cup is not a play, it's not a choice play, so we should go back and do, go back to our drawing board and see if we can get a very good coach. Joel, I'm going to ask you this because press is living. Second leg is crucial. Mm. We didn't score a goal that would have given us a sukum. Yeah. If the Ghanaians pick up a goal, it's going to be a disastrous outing. What do you think we can do to stem the Ghanaians on slot? Because the kind of pattern they played, they were over us in all facets. Now, taking a cue from the AFCON, the Gwabon, he played about three different formations during the AFCON. It didn't work for him against the Tunisians. Because fine, it's just simple. Don't allow your wingmen to run. Catch them, just a little bit of touch in the midfield, string on solid pass, and you're, and you're done. That was exactly what the Tunisians did. Now, on that game yesterday, the attack line for me didn't work. There was no coercion in that attack. I, they didn't do this whole pam, pam, pam. Yeah. I, no, I, I didn't see that. I didn't see shots coming out from the other side. There was no technical input, like he said. There was no killer passes. There was none. A pass was given to him, actually. All he needed to just push the ball, you know, to take his face off, like what we see in Europe, but they didn't do that. So now you're playing at home. You have to be. A little bit defensive, but you need a goal. You so can't, and with this Ghana team I see, you can't play defense with these guys. No, no way. You can't play defense with these people because they have faster players and they are attacking them on the wings. But I want you. It's football, not a coach. <laughs> it's been a pleasure really having you. Yeah, thank uh, you. We just hope that um, we'll begin to meet, especially now that we're trying to create a partnership between Kobe's Global. Yeah. Uh, sports management and super screen tv will begin to meet and your team will come in here to see how they can sell out these ideas to uh, people out there to get and buy into the idea did you say kobis kobis uh, k-o-b-i yes. yes that's a nice name maybe i could i could start bearing kobis uh, <laughs> so it's been a pleasure having you on thank you so friends. much for having me pleasure having you yeah. all right we'll run on this break we'll come back the sports center right on super screen magazine tv show will continue and so much more to talk about we'll be right back Welcome.